Welcome to another edition of Book Talk with Tracy. So last time I was uh, sharing uh, a novel called Whispering Winds. It's the latest novel at the time of this um, recording, in any case. And uh, it's the third book in the Marshdale series. Of course, we have Lone Wolf, which is about her uncle, uh, Thomas Lone Wolf, and the original book, which is Wind Over Marshdale. Um, all three of these are standalone for sure. This is definitely a standalone, but it does have a nice uh, connection to the other books in that, uh, you know, that we're carrying on some of the family and uh, minor characters um, in this book. And it's Tansy Lone Wolf is uh, the main character. So as I shared last time, um, she's a, a, a First Nations woman. She's in university and she's had a, a traumatic childhood. Um, and so that's part of the, you know, the, the story is really about her quest to, for acceptance and love and, um, you know, her, her journey of healing, if you will, um, from some of the trauma from her past. Some of the things that take place without too many spoilers, uh, she does have a sibling whose name is Manny, who actually is in, uh, prison for manslaughter. And I mentioned last time the authentic um, locations in this book. It takes place in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And so a lot of the scenery, the locations, I mentioned the train bridge, but there's other locations too um, that are very real. Uh, her love interest has an acreage. And in fact, that was, um, that was modeled after an acreage that my own dad used to own um, many, many years ago when I was a teen. And then her brother is in uh, the Prince Albert Penitentiary. So Prince Albert is, you know, an hour and a bit north of Saskatoon. Um, and there is a federal penitentiary there. Uh, and I've actually visited, I haven't been inside the penitentiary, but I did at one point, uh, you know, sort of drive around and <laughs> and did see the guys, you know, on the towers with their big guns and things. So it's, it's a maximum security uh, prison. And um, that is where her brother is being held. Now he is wrongfully accused. Um, well, he did, he did end up killing a man, but it, it wasn't intentional. Um, but he ends up going to prison. And so that's part of what's woven into the story is her, um, you know, quest to, to see justice served because uh, they feel that some of the reason why he really didn't get a fair trial and stuff is because he is a native. And so that's woven into the story as well, how, um, you know, they go about, uh, she and her, her friend, um, go about trying to see justice happen for her brother. And that penitentiary, as I said, is uh, is a real place. Now, interesting, I did, uh, I actually, when I was doing some of my re research, I do have a friend who worked as a counselor uh, in the prison system, and she had been into the, the PA penitentiary on more than one occasion when she would go in to do counseling. And so I was able to ask her about that whole process, like what is the process like, what do you have to do, you know, what is it like in there, and, and stuff like that. So I hope that I did a good job of making it um, authentic in that way. And I did try to, you know, do my research in that in that uh, part of the book as well. One of the things, of course, because I do uh, love to weave a faith element into my stories, is the fact that um, Tansy does not believe in God. She feels abandoned by God, really. But her uncle, Thomas, uh, from previous books, is a strong believer. And so she does have that connection. And, and, um, and of course, you know, that is an important thing, her faith journey, how she finally at, at one point in the story does uh, give her life to Jesus. Um, of course, there is the romantic side of things too. Her, uh, her love interest, David Crestwine, is a construction, he owns a construction company. And the first time they actually meet is on the highway. She, she works in the summer uh, on a road construction crew. So they meet, you know, she's the flagger and, and they meet that way, this sort of this chance meeting. Um, so there is some sort of either some dream scenes and uh, that type of imagery in it too. Of course, you know how it happens with, with 
stories or maybe you don't but what happens with me is I have an idea and I and I write but then sometimes things end up on the back burner and uh, and that's the case with this book I started this book wow a really long time ago um, way before I was published and I was working on some of my say uh, f- well four of my current novels um, I was kind of working on them all at the same time one of them was Whispering Winds another one was Conspiracy of Bones which was my first novel that was published and Play It Again which was the first one that I ever wrote and this one so I was working on these four novels concurrently and in fact this one was called Spirit's Call and it actually wasn't originally connected to the Marshdale universe. Um, but when I sort of resurrected the manuscript <laughs> uh, not too many years ago, I mean, it had been languishing there uh, on my computer for a really long time. And when I, when I resurrected that manuscript and started working on it again, I began to see um, some really interesting parallels. In fact, some of the dream imagery I ended up uh, using from the original Spirits Call, and I did use it in Windover Marshdale because I remembered, you know, some of those scenes, and I thought they were good. So, so then when I brought uh, when I brought this off and dusted it off, so to speak, <laughs> I I thought, you know, I think these actually go together, and the whole idea of wind, you know, wind over Marshdale, and then whispering wind, it kind of just came to me that oh wow, these actually do. They really mesh nicely. And in fact, um, a character, Thomas Lone Wolf, who is, appears in all three, is like the bridge. So that's part of, you know, the journey that this book took. Uh, as I said, it was a really long time. And for quite a few years, it was just sitting there and I didn't think anything would come of it. But I'm just so pleased that out of the, out of the, the trunk, so to speak, and dusted it off and uh, started working on it again. And it came together um, quite nicely, I think. So that is what I'm going to say about this book, Whispering Winds. And of course, you can check out all of my books and plays and devotional books on my website, which is tracykraus.com. And uh, leave a comment, um, you know, go to uh, your favorite online store, uh, write a review, and uh, it's really great to connect with readers, so I do appreciate that. And I hope that um, you'll join me again for another Book Talk with Tracy. See you next time.